food for thought. There are not enough classrooms at the Msakini Primary School, so half the lessons take place in the shade of yellow blossomed acacia trees. Given this shortage, it might seem odd that one of the school's purpose built classrooms has been emptied of pupils and turned into a storeroom for sacks of grain. But it makes sense. Food matters more than shelter. Msakini is in one of the poorer parts of Malawi, a landlocked southern African country of exceptional beauty and great poverty. No war lays waste Malawi, nor is the land unusually crowed or infertile, but Malawians still have trouble finding enough to eat. Half of the children under five are underfed to the point of stunting. Hunger blights most aspects of Malawian life, so the country is as good a place as any to investigate how nutrition affects development, and vice versa. The headmaster at Msakini, Bernard Kamanda, has strong views on the subject. He thinks food is a priceless teaching aid. Since 1999, his pupils have received free school lunches. Donors such as the World Food Program, WFP, provide the food, though sacks of grain, mostly mixed maize and soybean flour, enriched with vitamin A, in that converted classroom. Local volunteers do the cooking, turning the dry ingredients into a bland but nutritious slop and spooning it out onto plastic plates. The children line up in large crowds cheerfully singing a song called We Are Getting Porridge. When the school's feeding program was introduced, enrollment at Msakini doubled. Some of the new pupils had switched from nearby schools that did not give out free porridge, but most were children whose families had previously kept them at home to work. These families were so poor that the long-term benefits of education seemed unattractive when setting against the short-term gain of sending children out to gather firewood or help in the fields. One plate of porridge a day completely altered the calculation. A child fed at school will not howl so plaintively for food at home. Girls, who are more likely than boys to be kept out of school, are given extra snacks to take home. When a school takes in a horde of extra students from the poorest homes, you would expect standards to drop. Anywhere in the world, poor kids tend to perform worse than their better-off classmates. When the influx of new pupils is not accompanied by an increase in the number of teachers, as was the case at Sakini, you would expect standards to fall even further but they have not. Pass rates at Msakini improved dramatically, from 30% to 85%. Although this was an exceptional example, the nationwide results of school feeding programs were still pretty good. On average, after a Malawian school started handing out free food, it attracted 38% more girls and 24% more boys. The pass rate for boys stayed about the same, while for girls it improved by 9.5%. Better nutrition makes for brighter children. Most immediately, well-fed children find it easier to concentrate. It is hard to focus the mind on long division when your stomach is screaming for food. Mr. Commanda says that it used to be easy to spot the kids who were really undernourished. They were the ones who stared into space and didn't respond when you asked the question, he says. More crucially, though, more and better food helps brains grow and develop. Like any other organ in the body, the brain needs nutrition and exercise. But if it is starved of the necessary calories, proteins, and micronutrients, it is stunted, perhaps not as severely as a muscle would be, but stunted nonetheless. That is why feeding children at schools work so well.
And the fact that the effect of feeding was more pronounced in girls than in boys gives a clue to who eats first in rural Malawian households. It isn't the girls. On a global scale, the good news is that people are eating better than ever before. Homo sapiens has grown 50% bigger since the Industrial Revolution. Three centuries ago, chronic malnutrition was more or less universal. Now, it is extremely rare in rich countries. In developing countries, where most people live, plates and rice bowls are also fuller than ever before. The proportion of children under 5 in the developing world who are malnourished to the point of stunting fell from 39% in 1990 to 30% in 2000, says the World Health Organization. In other places, the battle against hunger is steadily being won. Better nutrition is making people cleverer and more energetic, which will help them grow more prosperous. And when they eventually join the ranks of the well-off, they can start fretting about growing too fast.